Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez and today I want to show you how I remove stray hairs in Photoshop. I actually have three ways of doing this that I'm going to show you guys in this video. But before continuing, I do want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Adorama. Adorama is an industry leading retailer that has been serving photography, videography and audio customers for almost 50 years now. Their motto is everyone is a creator and they do their best to unleash that creator within us all by providing us with the tools and expertise necessary to get the job done right. I personally shop at Adorama for both the great deals on products I use and recommend, but also the great customer service as well. If you find yourself interested in any product that I talk about in today's video, definitely check out the links in the description area below for links to those products and be sure to use those links if you decide to order. Like I said before, there are going to be three different tools that I will use in this video mainly and I wanted to go over the pros and cons of each of those tools, but there is going to be a fourth method as well as a fifth bonus tool. So let me go ahead and just start with the very first tool, which is going to be the spot hitting brush. I've gone ahead and just zoomed in really close to the area around her head. And now I'm going to get the spot hitting brush tool, which should be the shortcut J by default on Photoshop. And now I'm just going to get these little baby hairs around her head. And you can see that it's doing a good job at removing them. One thing I tend to do whenever I remove anything or alter anything, in Photoshop is I actually get a blank layer. So I'm going to go ahead and just get a blank layer and make sure that it has sample all layers here on the top and content aware. And now I'm just going to do the exact same thing. Get all these little hairs that I don't care for. The only downside to this tool is that it can be a little bit tedious. So let's say I wanted to remove all these different hairs here. It can take a long time if I just went ahead and just selected all these different hairs and remove them using this tool. So the very next tool that I wanted to go over is the patch tool. And I think it's the same shortcut. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the tool here and it'll bring up all the other tools. And I actually changed the shortcut to K, but by default it is J. So now I'm going to select the patch tool and I consider the patch tool a big brother to the spot healing brush tool in that it can tackle bigger straight hairs like this, like what you're seeing exactly on the screen. Just clumps up hair that aren't too complicated. And I do have certain settings here on top, but the main one is going to be sample all layers and content aware. Now I'm going to just select these different hairs. I'm not going to get too close to where it's very different, like on this area where there's a lot of color. I'm sticking to where the hairs are, where the white background or the blue background is. And now I'm going to just move to the side and it's going to do a good job of removing those. Sometimes you might see shifts in color, but you can go ahead and just fix that shift in color that it creates by just selecting the same area and then shifting to the side again. And it should correct it. Yeah. So it did correct it. I'm just going to do the exact same thing. And let me go ahead and just tackle a big area. Let's see all these hairs right here. And I know it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be faster than if I used the spot hitting brush. So let me just go ahead to the side, see what happens. I'm yep. See, it created like a big blob of blue or darker blue, but you can always fix that by just selecting that area again, then shifting to the side again, and then it'll kind of reduce the amount. And then you can just do the exact same thing I just did before selecting the same area moving to the side and it's not exactly perfect still, but I did want to show you guys the before and after real quickly because I just went ahead and removed all those different stray hairs right there using the patch tool very quickly. The third tool is actually going to be something that can actually help the mistakes that we're seeing in this specific removal of the straight hairs, which is actually going to be the clone stamp tool. As we saw before, there were shifts in colors whenever it is creating the new background without the straight hairs, but we can actually avoid that altogether using the clone step tool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just remove or delete actually that blink layer where we remove the straight hairs. I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to get the stamp tool, which is going to be S by default. Basically what the clone step tool is, is just a copy and paste tool, but you get to select exactly where you want to copy and exactly where you want to paste. The way that you select where you want to copy is you hit on Windows, it's Alt. I'm not sure exactly what it is on a Mac, but I'm going to click Alt. I'm going to copy this area right here, and then I'm going to paint it over to the left side. And it'll actually show you exactly what's going to be painted. So you can see this guy is going to be painted over here if I paint over there, but I want to paint over these hairs. So I'm going to just sample closer to the hair, do my best to get in a straight line to immediately to the left, not shift up or down, and then start to paint over. And now I have the hair being removed. And the reason why I wanted to keep it on a separate layer is because let's say, for example, I paint over the hair like this. Well, if I want to fix that, then all I have to do is just create a mask on the layer and then everything is going to be white by default. 
So you want to paint black to go ahead and just remove what you painted on. So now I can fix the hair exactly how I want it to be. So now this is the before, or this is actually the after that you're seeing, and this is the before. You can actually see where I forgot to paint off right there. So here is the before again, and here's the after. The main downside to using this clone snap tool is that it'll only work really great for moving straight hairs around the head when the background of the subject is gonna be pretty much the same color. So that's why I specifically sampled this area here because it's the same color and brightness right here in this area. But if we were to go to a different part of her hair and her head altogether, then you'll start to see that there's, there's a specific gradient here behind her head that'll make it a little bit more challenging to use this specific clone snap tool. Let me just get another link layer and I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. I have the clone snap tool right now. I'm gonna paint over here on the hair, around the hair, but because it's not quite exactly the same color and gradient, it was, you know, there's color shifting wherever I'm selecting. You can actually see if I get a black and white adjustment layer and I change the blues all the way to the bottom, you can actually see quite clearly where it's a darker shade of blue over here and I sampled it and then I painted it over here and it was darker. So you can see this is the before and after. So it's not quite apparent to the naked eye, but you can see if I do a before and after that, yeah, I did add different shade of blue over here. So that's where the clone stamp tool isn't gonna be the best because there can be shifts in color behind the head and it's gonna work best when there's not that shift in color, where there's not gradients. It works best when there's just the exact same color behind the subject. So maybe a backdrop or maybe just a completely overblown white sky that'll work best with the clone stamp tool. I've gone ahead and deleted those different layers and now I'm gonna zoom back into around the head. And <laughs> this fourth tool is a bit funny to me because you'll see in a second. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the marquee tool, which should be M by default, the shortcut. I'm gonna select this area around the head, probably like right here. I'm gonna hit Control or Command J. I'm gonna get the filter, go to liquify. And essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squish Sam's head, which sounds very, very weird. I'm basically gonna go ahead and select areas around her head and push them in towards her head. The reason for doing this is because those stray hairs are around her head and I wanna push them closer in and then use a mask to go ahead and, you know, I'll show you guys in a second. But basically what you do right now is just squish her head. That's the fun part. And I'm gonna just fast forward through this. It is best to use big brushes like this. So you do wanna select a large area around, you know, a large sample that you're gonna copy around her head. So here's the result with her head squished. It's not so much that her head is squished, but it was the hair moved out of the way, but you do get a squished head as a result. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a mask here on the bottom and make sure that I do have the brush tool. Yep, I have the brush tool, flows 34%. I'm right clicking to get to these settings and my hardness is at 50, which is okay. I want to paint black. So I'm gonna hit X on the keyboard. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint her normal face in. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the same keyboard shortcut X to now click white and I'm gonna zoom a little bit closer and now I'll paint the white over those hairs. And basically now what it's doing is just removing those stray hairs. And I am gonna be not so clean about it. I'm not gonna get the perfect edges because I'm just doing this quick for you guys for this video. Like I said before, it's not perfect. So this is gonna be the after, here's the before, here's the after. Let me show you guys a little bit zoomed in. Here's the after, here's the before, here's the after. But the main downside to using this liquify method is that if you have any sort of lines, straight lines, like exactly what's going on with this telephone wire behind your head, it is a bit warped because I did alter it. I squished that background around her head and it warped that line. If you have a complicated pattern behind the subject's head, then you might warp that pattern behind them. So the very last tool that I wanna show you guys is a new tool in Photoshop beta that's called Generative Film that uses AI to remove things like a stray hair or a lot of stray hairs. And I wanna show you guys that now, but I need to exit Photoshop and then go into Photoshop beta. Now we're here in Photoshop beta and it is important to be in Photoshop beta because right now generative fill is only available in Photoshop beta, but in the future it might be in the final Photoshop. So just wanted to throw that out there. I do have a video 
where I show you how to download Photoshop beta. You guys can check it out in the description area below as well as on the top right corner of the screen. Should be right there. And I did change the image because this one is a little bit more difficult in terms of being more hair on the subject. So that's why I wanted to show you what this new tool, Generative Fill, can do with the more complicated, messy hair on her face and on her arm. With this specific hair right here, it can be a challenge using any of the tools that I already described, the patch tool, the clone stamp tool, the spot healing brush tool, and you can't even use the liquify tool. So that's why I wanted to show you how Generative Fill can help you out in this specific instance where it isn't gonna be good results with any of the three tools that I already mentioned. I do have the lasso tool selected already, and I'm just gonna select this hair around, you know, this area right here around her nose and next to her eye. I'm not really caring to select these ones over here because those are gonna be easy jobs for the spot healing brush tool. So I'll just keep the more complicated areas right here. I'll actually just fix this to be a little bit less and only more into the hair area. Now all I gotta do is click generate a fill. I'm gonna type remove and I have a reason for that because it helps avoid errors that you might encounter and click generate. And now I'm just gonna wait for the result. So that was the first result. There's gonna be three variations that will happen when you use the generated fill tool. So this is the second result and this is the third result. And see, I actually think the first or the second one, probably the second one is better than this third one because it did create more hairs over there. So I do like this second one. And now what you can do basically is just keep using this generative fill tool to remove all these different hairs. And it did do the heavy lifting because this is the hair that was there on her face before. And this is now the hair that exists now. And it's less work to deal with. And now I can actually use something like this Bahini brush to remove all the little bit of hairs, which is a lot less stray hairs than before. Let me go ahead and just select the hair on top of her head over here and see what the generative fill tool can do with these hairs. Maybe I shouldn't have selected this area because just one stray hair there, but let's see what it can do with the forehead hair. Okay, so this was the first variation. Here is the second variation and here is the third variation. I do like that one. Let's see the before and after. If anything, it actually made the hair fall on her forehead nicer. So I do like this third variation. But one thing I did want to point out is that sometimes when you use this generative fill tool, one con is that it could make kind of smooth results. So sometimes I might add noise. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna make sure that I have the top layer selected, hold down shift, click the bottom one, I'm gonna right click, click merge layers. And now I'm gonna hit control and click on that new generative layer that's merged. It'll select everything that I created. And now I'm gonna go to filter, go to noise, go to add noise. And then sometimes I'll change the amount depending on the size of the photo or how close the subject is in the photo. So I'll zoom in just a little bit and I'll just adjust it till it looks fine, at least close to how the noise looks like around that area that was not created, that was actually there to begin with. So let's see, 1.5 usually works well. I think 1.5 is actually pretty good here. So I'll click okay. And now instead of being a little bit too smooth looking, now it has a little bit of noise. So it kind of matches better with the surrounding area. So here is the before and here is the after. It's not exactly perfect, but I don't want to go ahead and make this video a lot longer than it needs to be. But I have already showed you guys the tools. Oh, the main con when it comes to using that generative fill tool is that you do need to be connected to the internet to use it. So that is a huge con. It actually works the best of all the different tools that I mentioned today but that is a big con. You need to be connected to Wi-Fi or internet in some way to use it. That's pretty much it for this video. I wanna say one last thing to Adorama for sponsoring this video. It really does allow me to make more videos for you guys for free. So definitely check them out. If you have any questions about any of the tools I use in today's video, let me know in the comment section below and I'll reply as soon as possible. Take care guys and I'll see you in the very next video.